Hello friends. Thanks for stopping by, hanging out. So I'm going to give people some permission to exit if you don't want a complaining video because I'm going to be largely complaining, kind of complaining. I'm going to start with pet stuff, but it's all like medical industrial complex. So again, if you're not into that kind of thing, if you're just like, I can't relate to that, feel free to exit. But if you're somebody who has dealt with that kind of thing before, then maybe this will <laughs> be, uh, I don't know, communal purging or what do they call that? Catharsis. Communal catharsis. So I'm going to start with uh, pet related issues. So my little terrier dog, Zippy, has had an issue for, I don't know, about a year. And she has every right to make a video about negligent owners. Because I have been very slow to catch on to what is going on with her. And so her suffering, um, I feel bad about that. But, you know, it's one of the things with having a chronic illness, or an acute illness for that matter, that you're not... Um, What did I say? Something that doesn't isn't clear, like a broken leg. <laughs> Where people are like, oh, she has a broken leg. You know? Let you know, let's uh, let's help. <laughs> let's you know, whatever the case may be, you know. And then probably heals at a certain pace, etc. You end up having to do a lot of forgiveness. It's like I have to forgive myself for the fact that I was so out of it that I was not taking good care of my animals. They're all still alive. And it was what it was. Um, so, yeah. So she, at first, you know, it looked like it was something like her eye weeping, and then it was, you know, like collecting or hardening or whatever. I couldn't figure that out. Finally, so there was a couple of attempts on my part to just clean the thing that I was seeing and expecting it to heal or apply some stuff to it, expecting it to heal, and it didn't happen. Finally, I got her to the vet in spring of this year, and... Um, Sorry, looking at collage material, trying to decide what what to keep and what not to keep. Um, and the vet, it took a second even because I had done a good job of cleaning it. I will give myself a little credit there. The vet wasn't kind of seeing what was wrong, but then she kind of rolled her finger under my dog's eye, and there was a little goo came out. It was just liquid. I shouldn't say goo. It wasn't. It was runny kind of a liquid. And she said, oh, well, she has something in there. And this drainage channel will remain until you get out whatever is in there. Surgery. Okay? <laughs> that's, what, that's what that comes down to, in the end, is the word surgery. And I had just had to spend a lot of money on my other dog, who ended up with a completely different situation that was more acute. Anyway, um, so I put that in the in the future, 
but there's there, there's an issue with surgery for her, which is that she. Um, and forgive me if I have talked about this earlier, um, but there's an issue in that she like was always pawing at that eye and just as a fuss budget in general. And I thought, how on earth am I going to keep if she has stitches or anything that's going to that could, that could be bothered, anything that could be bothered my expectations that she would be bothering it so all I could just think of is all right so she's going to end up with stitches on her face and and she's going to be trying to tear those stitches out and I had tried at one point um, to put uh, um, one of those cones Elizabethan collars I think they call them on her and she like she didn't freak out but she was it, it made her panic it, it, um so but a frozen kind of panic it was weird and it's like all right so that is not working very well but eventually um the situation escalated somewhat, in, somewhat in a good way, actually. Um, and it ended up um, being infected, which it wasn't really previously. Uh, and that created an opportunity because it created a, a larger hole for the doctor to go in and do her exploration in. So it gave her a clearer channel to go into. And she did just that, but she was not comfortable. So what she discovered is that it was a broken tooth. She discovered that my dog had a broken tooth, and that was uh, the issue. But she was not comfortable completely amending that issue. She cleaned it out. She gave me antibiotics. She said, we can hope that... Um, that this infection was it, and that clearing it out will be the end of it. Um, and if if you have to, I guess she was concerned that the roots of the tooth came up so close to the jaw that they could potentially even be attached to the jaw, and that if she were try to try to pull them, to pull the tooth out that uh, she could break the dog's jaw. Now maybe she has actually had this experience in the past. I actually consider her to be quite a good vet when it comes to surgery, but maybe she has had that experience in the past with a tooth. And that's and like she didn't want the liability. And that's okay, you know. She was up front about it. That's fine. She did her job. She figured out what... Um, what was wrong, which was the point of the surgery to begin with, and um, she did what she could. She put on a very secure <laughs> Elizabethan co collar. She gave me pain meds uh, to uh, essentially to kind of prevent my dog from having reason to want to, you know, by eliminating pain, she was eliminating one of the reasons that my, my dog would try to uh, scratch at herself or anything, and she gave me drugs to kind of keep her semi-sedated isn't the right word, but, you know, extra mellow, let's just say. And so that was all fine. But I asked her when I picked Zippy up, I said, well, what, uh, in anticipation of potentially needing to, um, you know, needing to take her to a vet, I asked, or had one of her staff asked her what dentist she would recommend. And I think something got lost in translation because they came back with a group that was a human dental office. <laughs> and I thought, well, whatever, maybe that is a thing. You know, maybe that's a thing. Uh, 
where human dentists will actually um, work on pets. I don't know. So at the beginning, I was fairly optimistic because uh, she seemed to be doing well. Uh, the, the incision was healing well. Everything was looking good, and I thought, well, maybe I will get out of this without having to um, at least not immediately have to take other action. But it was not to be. So a couple of days after going, what well, was a few days actually, after she was um, off of the antibiotics and a couple of days after she was off of um, the painkiller, she uh, started pawing at her face again. And at that point, I, you know, I was given permission to take off the the cone, and so I took that off. And so she's pawing at herself again, and she's developing a red space, like a red mushy space that I think was not from her pawing at her face, on her face, and so. It's like, all right, I'm going to have to do something. And so I called, I had looked up, in anticipation, I had looked up doggy dentists, pet dentists, or whatever. And there's one that's actually over an hour south of here. And I called, so I looked that one up. I called the one that was originally referred to me, and there must have been some miscommunication there because they said, we don't, we don't do that here. <laughs> and so the people dentists did not do pet dentistry also. So I called this other person who was supposedly, specifically for pet dentists. Now I did this because she seemed to be giving me the impression that this was a tricky maneuver and that I needed to go to some kind of specialist. You know, she's a general vet and for some reason she couldn't do it. So I call this specialist and it's like six to eight hundred dollars for the diagnostics and then, then the surgery itself is like somewhere from 150 to 250 or something like that. But the, the diagnostics, the imaging, etc., was 600, 800, much more than the surgery itself. And it's like, you, you have got to be kidding me. Now, I can't do that. There is like zero way. And I wouldn't ask somebody to do that for me, you know? And I don't feel up to the complication of like starting a GoFundMe and probably people would tell me I'm crazy because eventually that's what I told myself. <laughs> but I didn't tell myself that about me. I told myself that about the setup. The setup, and not by my vet, but by these other organizations that said that in order to pull a tooth, to extract a tooth, they needed to do 600 to $800 of diagnostics ahead of time. It's like, what? You know, so at first it was, you know, because I'm having issues with depression and mood and etc. when I found out that number, you know, it was just like, you know, get off of the phone, you know, and it was just like immediately. But I wasn't thinking of solutions. That's part of the issue that I've been having, is I'm not capable then to shift my thinking and come up with solutions. Instead, it's I'm stuck. I'm stuck in that there, there's no way, that thinking, there's no way that I can do this, that that's what's required, and there's no way that I can do this. And so now I feel like I'm looking at Am I going to have to put my dog down because of 
a tooth that needs to be pulled because I don't have the money to pay for the diagnostics for somebody to take it out. So, so I had to sit with that for a little while and eventually, and then I thought, well, let me try, there's a, um, and this is even further away, but uh, a veterinary college, you know, a college that's well known for turning out veterinarians and doing vet veterinary research. So I called them. I saw that they did do dentistry type stuff and I called them and it's, it was the same story. This ridiculous amount of diagnostics that they had to do and, it, and finally it started to click in with me and it's like, all right, so you're wanting me to pay for the for the machines or the technology that you have gotten, whether or not it's really necessary. Because then it started, again, it's, this is my medical anger, right? Medical industrial complex anger coming out. It's like, for eons, people must have been pulling the teeth of animals for eons. You know, even before there were professional vets, I bet that there were people pulling the teeth of their animals for whatever reason, if they could figure out why there was a hole in their pet's face ended up being a tooth. But anyway, um, so I backed off, and, and, and now what was sticking in my head is that you can't tell me that country vets have not been pulling teeth on animals for less than a thousand fucking dollars. <laughs> you know, it's just insane. And why my vet kind of led me down a path that would, she knew I didn't have money. She should assume that the vast majority of people who come to her practice would not have that kind of money. Um, but anyway, you know, again, why she led me down that path, I don't know. It, it, it could be she was merely, again, could have been miscommunication, but it could be that she simply wanted me to, um, to go outside of the county so that, you know, I wasn't taking my dog to some another vet in the county and then they would know that she, um, you know, wasn't able to deal with it. <laughs> or whatever, but I, um, I started, well, you know what I did? I pulled cards, actually. I will give credit to the tarot for this, because I pulled cards around what should I do. Um, I think I was, at that point, was, like, looking for funding like online funding, you know, how can I get funding maybe to um, pay for, you know, like from a pet rescue group or something to pay for my dog's ridiculous surgery. And, um, and what came up was, I remember the first two, well, I think I remember all of them, which is a miracle. So I had brought, yeah, I had, like, on my computer, I had, like, you know, seven tabs open, you know, for things that I should maybe apply for, but at the same time realizing I really didn't quite have time. I really needed to deal with this now. Anyway, got out the good old Smith Waite Centennial and, um, and just asked, what, what should I do about Zippy? What do I need to do here? And the Emperor came up, and the Ten of Pentacles, and the Four of Cups. But the Emperor, to me, was a specific vet in my, er in my area. It was like immediate. That has got to be Dr. Adams. He is the Emperor in this area. And I, I think he's a, a wonderful vet, not a perfect vet. I don't think any of them are. Um, but if I had to have, you know, really tricky diagnostics done, like as in diagnostic intelligence, not machinery, <laughs> um, he's the person I would go to. If my dog had some mysterious disease, I would take it to him. Um, but there has been a problem 
going to see him because he, uh, that's why I started going to this other vet, is because he is so incredibly busy, which to me is kind of like not only the Emperor, but also the Ten of Pentacles. He's a very established, of course, most of the vets in this area actually are established and quite old. Um, you know, my age or older, except for the, the one that, that I was taking Zippy to originally, who was not wanting to pull a tooth. And so I just called. I called them, and I called um, another vet that I go to, the vet nearest to me, which is who I go to just for shots frequently and stuff like that. And I just called and said, do you pull teeth? Do you do extractions? And how much does it cost? Yes, they do extractions. Yes, uh, you know, like, yeah, they do extractions. There's like no, there's no only if or whatnot. How much does it cost? Like $130 to $150. Not six to eight hundred dollars and you know like two hundred dollars to two fifty no no so this pissed me off because you know I'm in a bad financial situation um and I'm in well how, how would I even say it a maybe rocky, emotional situation. You know, I'm not functioning at my best in terms of thinking and, and it, you know, what triggers, things can trigger me emotionally that normally wouldn't trigger me emotionally. Normally I would have gone into solution mode much more quickly. And so yes, in the end, I took Zippy, and thank heavens, they were able to take her fairly quickly. And um, yeah. took Zippy to Dr. Adams. She got her tooth pulled. He said it wasn't terribly problematic. Probably, it, you know, since she had, um, it had become infected, and the amount of time that had passed, one of the roots was quite weak anyway. And so, he said he had to break the tooth, which actually showed up somewhere. I think I did a, on the day of, I think I did a. How is this going to go? And I got like the two of pentacles, and to me that was, yeah, they're going to have to break the tooth. <laughs> they're going to have to break it more. Anyway, they did. He broke the tooth, and he said, yeah, it came out pretty easily after we broke, you know, after we got it into two parts. It wasn't, it wasn't unusual. You know, he, he gave me antibiotics. He said you shouldn't need any painkillers, but I had actually gone back to the previous doctor and asked her, I said, um, you know, I said, I need, I need to keep her on painkillers for a while until I can decide here what I'm going to do because it's coming back. The problem is resurfacing. And so she gave me the um, painkillers to continue. So I already had some painkillers to keep her on. And um, she seems to, after that tooth was out, um, she's, she's done so much better, so much better. Just healing in general, um, happier. She came off the, an well, of course, I can't say that. I can't say that she came off the anesthesia easier because the prior one, she was... Um, she, 
she was not only coming off of anesthesia, she was on some things to keep her kind of dopey so that she wouldn't fight uh, what had just happened to her. She wouldn't fight the stitches, try to get the stitches out, etc. So, uh, But anyway, she's doing so much better for so much less money than I was originally led to believe that it would cost. You know, because, yeah, there's like no way that a country vet is going to charge nearly a thousand dollars to take out a tooth. They can just take it out. Anyway, um, yeah, and why they can't do that at a veterinary college, even if, you know, even if I had to go all of that distance. Now, I could see, like, if you're somebody who's setting yourself up as this super-duper veterinary dentist, that, you know, you might do that. Charge, you know, get to this machinery and charge an exorbitant amount. But, you know, if you're a veterinary college, you should be teaching your vets who are not going to have this super duper technology to be able to, to pull a tooth without all of that extra cost. I mean, I mean, it's just, yeah, it makes me angry above and beyond um, my own particular situation. That whole mindset makes me angry. So yeah, I've managed to babble on about my dog here for nearly 30 minutes, so I'm going to call this done and I'm going to leave the rest of my complaining about the human medical industrial complex for the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.